Albert, we've got quite a lot of things in front of us. <laughs> um, lots of ingredients. Yes. What's going on here? Let's do a soup then. Let's do it. Yep, because I think it's one has been one of the topics of the season. Yep. About the, how the suspensions will perform with the new tires, the higher tires, the, the 18 inches Pirelli tires, and how, how the teams will deal with these up, updates on the new regulations to try to maximize the performance of the tires yep. and the aero, aero performance and the suspension performance. That is also important, very important. Yes, incredible. Because so, these are, are limited, they cannot play with hydraulics anymore. I'm very curious as to where you got these um, Pirelli wind tunnel tires from, but I'm not sure you're going to tell me. Now, they've been very helpfully on that. Also, Alpine that has uh, lent us some parts of the car, so we appreciate and we say thanks to them. Yeah, absolutely. Right, yeah. explain this. What, what's going on here? Why have I got a remote control car body in front of me? Well, the first thing, we, I think we, we have to explain why the car has suspension. Okay. Okay, so the ideal car is the car that has all time the four wheels, the four tires on the floor with the biggest patch as possible and that whatever is going on on the tarmac, whatever is going on when the car is on the track, the platform is stays stable as much as possible. You want as much of the tire touching the road as possible, That's going it. through corners, going over bumps, everything like that. Yeah, so let's try to put suspension links. That is the thing that is connecting the tires to the chassis. We have suspension, but let's try what it happen if we do solid links. No suspension. Car. No suspension at all. Right, well, let's go over our crafted yep. bump here Come and see on. what happens. Push. Let's push. Yeah, you see, the platform, the platform is, is moving a lot. Even, even the rear is lifting, so we don't want that. Yeah, okay. We need to put some, something that is absorbing this energy. You can try, we have put here a proper suspension with a, with a spring, and let's see what happens when we go over the cap. And this is actually a tiny suspension with springs and dampers and everything, and it is adjustable, which is really, really yeah. blessed. So let's have a look as we go over the curb. Oh, look at that. The platform has stayed flat. Let's do that again. And the energy is absorbed by, look at that. There's a, a compression there and the rear tire stays on. And it's just going down as soon as possible. So we have a little bit of that ideal situation with this car, with the suspension. But that's not, the, a Formula One car doesn't look like this. No. I see I the front of them. This isn't what they I look know. like. What, 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 what's, it? what's all this? Tell well, us. This is the spring, Yeah, the, the conventional spring. But it's big, it's heavy, we don't want that on the Formula One cars. I mean, this race is about the same as a good sized can of beer, I'd say. Yeah, it's been used sometimes with the third spring. You remember uh, Felipe's Massa spring that hits the helmet? That was none of that. But in Formula One, they use that torsion springs. It makes the same effect, let's say. It stores energy and it, it pulls it back to where it was in a different way. So if I fix one end and I pull from the other, it's like an elastic thing. So and that's why it's torsion. It's a twisting force exactly. that you're seeing. It's a twist that, that gives you that spring in media. And then we need what is called a shock absorber, a damper. We need something to stop a little bit that energy that is coming out from the springs when it's coming back to the car. Because if not, we could see like a proposing thing. Well, similar to that. a clone car. It would be bouncing, bouncing like a child on a bed, wouldn't it? Car. Bouncing, jumping up and down. So we need that. That is giving a little bit of stiffness to everything to control, to limit this bouncing. Okay? Right. Let's go for it. Because there is different configurations. Because, no, because this, 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 yeah. stuff, this is stuff you don't normally see. This is all buried inside the car. Exactly. Isn't it? That you, might see, you might see the top of a torsion bar sticking out on a part like this, but you won't see most of the dampers or you'll just see the top of it like that sticking out of the yep. front of the car. But you've got to link all of this stuff to the wheels. That's what we're talking about. Keeping exactly. the wheels on the ground, isn't it? Exactly and absorbing the energy and for the engineers to try to set up, the, set up the car in a way where they have they can get the best performance of the tire that is the only thing that is touching on the car okay. there's nothing else so the big part of the work of the engineers is to make that tires work now let's have a look at this because this is what we've been talking about the different approaches to how you approach yes. put the tires on the ground and keep all of this stuff connected to those four rubber booties that go all around the car. Yeah, so here we are. What, what are we looking at here? Come on, the, I can tell a little bit, but yeah. give us talk through. <laughs> we have six points connecting the chassis to the tires. That is uh, six arms, basically. You have double wishbone, a top one and a bottom one, connected by a B. Then we have uh, what is called track rod or steering arm, that is managing the steering of the car. And then we have our friend, the rod. The yes. one that is 
connecting and transferring that motion from the tire to the suspension. And you might call these a push rod, or indeed, yeah, a pull rod. Exactly. Good one, because what we have here is McLaren suspension with exactly points where all the arms are fixed on the car. And another example is the Ferrari. This half is Ferrari, that is a push rod. And as you said, McLaren, as Red Bull, are using a pull rod configuration. And that's simply because the components in the middle, say your damper here, sits in centre of the car. And this section, it pulls the suspension on that side. You want a good it, example of that? Absolutely, let me, we always let, want to Let me take some, uh, I will put a red line here on the rod, let's call, let's say, from the McLaren one. Can you lift a little bit the tire? What is doing? It's coming up and pulling outwards. Pulling, okay. Let's do the same thing on the McLaren. We shall see what happens. I we think I can guess what's going to happen here. You want to you wanna hold the chassis? I'll, I'll hold the chassis. Yeah, I will do it, same thing. And it's? It's pushing, it's pushing the components in the middle. So, push rod for Ferrari and pull rod for McLaren. Okay, advantages and disadvantages. Right, Let's so work. red, disadvantage, green is advantage. an advantage. Okay. So, first one, Albert. First one. So, in the pull rod thing, we have to think that we have everything down. We have the shock absorbers, the torsion bars, the rockers, we have all down in the car. That's a good thing or is a bad thing? What do you think? Well, if I was working on a car, I would say for the Ferrari layout, the push rod, all the stuff's at the top. I don't top. have to crawl around on my knees. Is it the work? It's easy to get to. The access is really easy. And yeah. on the pull rod, if it's all buried down deep in the front of the chassis. I agree with that. It's very hard to get at. So I'm going to say access is really difficult yeah. with the yeah. pull rod Yeah, because layout. we have the pedals here. So we, if we have the springs, if we have the rockers and the dampers, under the pedals, it's so difficult to work on it. Okay. Right. Weight distribution. Yeah. So this is an easy one for me. Yeah. The pull rod suspension mounts all of these heavy components down the bottom of the chassis. And this is? Low as possible. It's a real advantage of the pull rod layout. Green for the pull. And it's a real disadvantage for the push rod layout because all those components are sitting up in the air, raising Here the centre of gravity height, which is not that. good for any car. <laughs> good for that. One, one. No right. tricky ones. Right, so now it gets a little bit less obvious. Ah, okay. Thickness. Yeah. Thickness. What, what I mean with thickness, when I put thickness, is do we need to build a stronger suspension? Because maybe the rod, as we are pulling, it can be thinner, but everything must be stronger. So maybe it could be heavier on the pull rod, but on this side, it's in the, in the middle. It's not clear, uh, but I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you. Who's heavier? Okay, let's, let's talk about, wait, who's heavier? I am going to say that the push rod is the heavier one. Let's go, so I'll trust you. That's where you go. We're going to red for Ferrari, green for McLaren. I don't think it's that clear cut, Albert. No, I really no. don't think it's that it's clear cut. It's in the border. And I don't think it's yeah. obvious. And no. the next one, I really don't uh, think you it's like going to be obvious. You like this, this thing, is I know one, you like right? this. Right? Aerodynamics. Yes. Which of these layouts is better for the overall aerodynamics of the car? We Advantage or disadvantage? Do you know what? what? I am not going to stick them on there. Really? Yeah. That's a good point. Because if I went down to Red Bull, yeah. they would say the aerodynamics of a push rod front suspension is yes. a disadvantage. If you went to Red Bull, we'll, we'll put it here. Yeah, Red Bull will say and that. And McLaren, yeah. And yeah. McLaren will say that. Yeah. But Ferrari, they'd go like this. Ferrari will say? They will say it's a massive disadvantage. They don't agree, and nobody can agree which is best, can they? That's the problem. Yes. Yeah, that's it. That's the reason why some cars are fitting the pull rod suspension and some other cars are putting or fitting the front push suspension. So Albert, you're designing a Formula One car, <laughs> final answer. Which one are you designing, push rod or pull rod? The, pu the push rod is cheaper and easier to work with it. And we haven't talked yet about the low, it's the angle of the, the push rod that is massive about the efficiency of the structures and that's that's very complicated but i'm not in the level to try to explain this because it's so complicated so albert would build a push rod car and i think i agree what would you build so take that one 